means they're probably a tougher crowd. So, you know, so uh, tonight um, I'm thinking about this idea of seeking satisfaction. Um, it's probably been since the past summer, it's the groundwork has been laid for this kind of thought that I've, that, that's been developing. And so when I'm talking about seeking satisfaction, I'm kind of looking at it initially uh, in a negative view. Um, you know, seeking that instant gratification. We live in a world nowadays that is all about me, mine. I want this as soon as I can have it. And I want whatever's gonna make me happy and fill me up in this instant. And uh, I, I want to uh, start with a quote that I found um, from the Bible Project. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of them before, but they, they do a fairly good job of summarizing scripture and some of their own, you know, um, teaching. And it says, we repeatedly try and quench our thirst on our own terms. And I think that is so true of myself, the amount of times that I make a plan and I say, you know, this is going to be great. And then I realize it only satisfies for so long. Um, so I, I wanted to look back at some examples in the Bible where we can see people with uh, who were seeking satisfaction. And we're not necessarily going to turn to all these. These are just kind of, you know, you're going to know the stories when I say them. Um, you know, we're just going to jump through them real fast. So don't worry too much about trying to follow along. Um, I wrote most of the stuff down in my journal. So starting with David. Uh, David, he saw Bathsheba. And he thought to himself, that I, I desire Bathsheba, that will satisfy me. And as we see from the story of David, that as you know, that continued, his sin, you know, eventually caught up for him, and he had to pay the consequences for that. Then, as we continue, um, you know, Exodus 32, the golden calf, the Israelites, Moses went away, and they said, we don't know if this invisible God that we see is going to satisfy. So could you make us something that we can worship, that we can see right now, that will fill that hole that we feel? And again, you know, they paid the consequences for that. And uh, again, in uh, jumping to the New Testament, we think of Judas selling Jesus. He thought that that money, obviously we need money to live. Money is all around us today. You know, it definitely can be a temptation for people. Um, and, you know, Judas saw that and he said, you know, these, these, this silver, that'll help me. And I think it's worth it to give Jesus away for this money. And again, you know, later he realized that that was a terrible mistake. He had sinned by, you know, selling Jesus essentially, and he later took his own life. So, you know, this, this seeking satisfaction, this desire that we have in our, in our souls to fill this, this hole that we think we have and that we think that these worldly things can, can fill, we can see from examples in the Bible that, you know, they only fill for so long. Before, you know, uh, I was reading, again, another quote from this past summer, Nate Bramson's book, uh, what, would, what, would, what If Jesus Meant What He Said? Um, and he said, uh, we seek the next high we think will satisfy. We're always seeking for bigger and better things. And the biggest and best thing is, you know, been in front of us our whole lives. Um, and so, you know, uh, again, around us all the time are all these distractions of this will satisfy, this will satisfy. You know, we, we see it all over. I mean, through apps, through commercials, it's all just playing, you know, into your feel good, you know, this will make you feel good. So you should get it. And then, well, it only made you feel good for so long, but now we have this better product. Um, you know, I, I have a, an issue every once in a while where, you know, I think um, buying something will make me feel good. It doesn't. I was just thinking the other day, you know, I really like the Apple ear pods, you know, or the AirPods, you know, um, I have the one with the cords, you know, it gets annoying. Sometimes I'm listening to something while I'm driving, it pulls out of my, you know, I pull it out of my ears. Like, I'm like, you know what, like, I could just get the ones that are 250 bucks and, you know, I'd be happy. But would I really? Like, this is, this, is the, this is the fight that I have with myself all the time where, you know, that's why you never buy something right away. You want to sleep on it because you usually you realize later that it's like, well, I probably don't really need that. So uh, Romans 8, 5 says, uh, thinking along the terms of, um, you know, seeking satisfaction, it says, uh, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. 
but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Um, you are what you eat. You know, what you spend your time doing and putting into your head, that's what you're going to get in return. Um, oh, there's, there's one I really actually wanted to go over earlier that I kind of forgot about. Um, so the woman at the well, she was there for, I would say, she got called out on two worldly satisfactions. She was looking first just for a drink of water. She was thirsty. That's normal. And I'm not holding that against her. But, you know, we then go on and Jesus calls her and calls her out and says, look, you've been with, I think, I believe it was five other men, you know. You're looking for something and you haven't found it. But what I'm telling you is actually over there, it says, give me a drink. You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Jesus is offering living water, something that's going to satisfy, something that is long term. Short term satisfaction. Is it worth it? You know, um, we, we, we can seek a long term satisfaction. I think uh, I was thinking about these examples that I was finding. Um, David, if you look at the life of David, doesn't his life get so much more complicated as he rose into power? As he got more, maybe uh, the, the, his position allowed for more influence of worldly things around him. Because, you know, before he was just shepherding the sheep. He was, you know, protecting them. As he, you know, as those, as, as he essentially kind of, you know, he, he got put in that position by God. But I think eventually it led him, you know, with all the distractions of money and power that he had, you know, he was seeking satisfactions in the wrong things at that point in certain instances of his life. Um, and so, you know, I just wanted to uh, end with a quote by C.S. Lewis, again, from Nate Bramson's book. I was, guess I just apparently really liked the, the stuff he was saying. Um, and it says, if I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. I'll read it again. If I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. We have something that will satisfy. A relationship with Jesus Christ will satisfy us here and now as long as we put the time and the effort into it and ultimately lead us to a long-term satisfaction of spending eternity with him. So I hope that this was uh, encouraging. I'm speaking as much to myself as, you know, hopefully speaking to all of you. And uh, so with that, uh, we will open up in prayer. I will close my segment in prayer. So. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this evening that you um, have allowed us to all gather, um, those at home and those here. We just pray that uh, as we live in this world that has become ever so, uh, so much more busy um, with distractions all around us, that we would um, slow down, that we would focus on what is important, what is a long-term satisfaction versus what is short-term satisfaction. Um, and, you know, as, as we um, pray tonight, we just, focus, we just pray that we would focus um, on you and that we would focus on uh, lifting each other up in your name. Amen.